Good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome to the 800 Credit Score Man Show. I am your host, Kevin King. He is I, and I am him, the 800 Credit Score Man himself. And I want to say thank each and every one of you for coming in and listening to the 800 Credit Score Man Show. I truly appreciate it. Do me two favors today. I need you to share the show. That's the one thing. That's the first thing. However you get this show, you know it's on iTunes, it's on Stitcher, it's even on Alexa, it's on uh, Podbean, it's on uh, CastBox, it's on, on Google Play, it's a lot of places. So share the show for me. I really appreciate it if you would do that. So I need you to do that one thing. And then a second thing I need for you to do is to go to www.spreaker.com. In the search, look for 800 Credit Score Man, and I want you to follow me there. I need you to follow me there. If I can get some more followers there at Spreaker.com, then we'll be able to move to maybe even another platform and a bigger platform as well. So I appreciate if you do those things for me, especially if you find value, if you will, in what I do here and what you hear on a weekly basis on the 800 Credit Score Man show. So thank you. So today, what are we going to talk about? Well, first things first, last week I said we were going to talk about, you know, some credit stuff. And I said I was going to talk about what should you do with your taxes and your tax returns now that you got them. We ran out of time and I didn't get to the tax portion. So we're going to discuss that a little bit today. It's not very long in, in itself, at least not dealing with the credit portion of it. So we're going to talk about that today. And then also today, I've been getting a lot, a lot of questions. Um, I've had a lot of people or new listeners to the show. And if you are new to the show, welcome to the show. I've had a lot of listeners, new listeners to the show, and I'm getting a lot of questions coming in on a daily basis. Way too many just to like pick one for the question of the day. And you know that's going to be sponsored by Cute as a Cupcake. But way too just to pick um, just one. So I'm going to answer some of those questions today um, on the show. And that's how we're going to fill out the show for the rest of the day. So let's go ahead and get started. And we got to get with some business first. All right. So remember those good old days of dual income, no kids, double digit pay raises and two for one stock splits. Well, these days, money's a lot harder to get a hold of and even harder to hang on to. That's why State Farm agent Paul Donning would like to introduce you to the discount double check. He'll go through your car insurance policy line by line to make sure you're getting the discounts you deserve and aren't leaving any money on the table. It's fast. It's free. And when he's done finding you 10% here, 15% there, you could find yourself looking at discounts of up to 40%. That can mean savings worth hundreds of dollars, and that's a pretty good return for simply investing a few minutes of your time. So call State Farm agent Paul Dawning today at 219 884-6947. That's 219-884-6947. Because being there to help keep more of your money in your pocket is why he's here. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. All right, so let's jump into the show. If you're new to the show, let me tell you, I come on, I give shout outs. We're going to talk about a credit topic, maybe something on budget. Today, we might even, we're going to talk about taxes a little bit. There's a question of the day that comes in the middle of the show, and that comes from you, the listeners. It's the best part of the show, as far as I'm concerned, is that interaction between you and I. And so if you have a question, you want to send it to me, you hit me at 800creditscoreman at gmail.com. You contact me there. Um, I will answer your question directly to you, and I may pick it to be a part of the 800 Credit Score Man show. So thank you so much. And so speaking of shout outs, I've got to give this shout out to my goddaughter, Kennedy Hudson. She celebrates her birthday today doing her thing down at TSU. That's Tennessee State University, y'all. So happy, happy birthday to you, Kennedy Hudson. Happy birthday. All right. So let's jump into um, the show a little bit. I'm a, I don't know if I want to uh, throw a couple questions out to you first or if I want to uh, tackle this uh, tax thing first. Well, let's go a little bit about the, the taxes first. Let's talk about that since I was supposed to do it last week. So now that you've got your tax return, you know, what are you going to do with it? 
So you, you, you're going to get that money. If you haven't gotten your W-2s already, um, I'm sure they'll be there by Monday because by law, they have to send them out. Your employers have to send them out at, um, by the end of January. So they'll be here really soon. And if you've already went and applied and, I mean, went and filled them out and turned them in, that money's on the way to you. Or maybe you even went to one of those places that'll give you your money basically up front and charge you just a little bit. I'm going to say just a little bit, even though I don't think that it is for you to get it a few days or maybe a couple of weeks early. I don't suggest that you do that because I never want to pay for something that you don't have to. And so this money, this tax money, a lot of people look at it that don't get bonuses or commissions at at work as this is their bonus time. So people want to um, get that money and they've already got plans for it before it even comes. When I get my tax return, the first thing they say is I'm going to pay so and so back that they borrowed that money from. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. If you watch Judge Mathis the way that I do, Judge Mathis says don't go for that. People telling you they're going to pay you um, with your with their tax return. So you're getting that money back. And what do you want to do? Well, here are several things that you want to do. One of the things you want to um, earmark when you get that money back is you want to be able to handle whatever household needs. So if you have some household needs, some things that you need, you have that leak that you haven't um, dealt with as of yet, you've got to change this or that at the house, then if you have enough money to do that, then you want to go ahead and maybe earmark a little money for that. If it's something like I just spoke, like I just said, a leak at your house, you know, the longer you let that thing leak, the worse it's going to get. The leak's going to get bigger. Your water bill is going to get bigger. Um, it may destroy some of the drywall or the cabinet that is surrounded or whatever it is. So you want to try to take care of those things. You should be doing it anyway. But if you don't have the money and you've got it now in hand, then maybe you should go ahead and take some of those, take care of some of those household needs. Another thing that you want to do is you want to be and the reason I'm doing this tax thing is because I said before um, at the beginning of the show, this whole show is going to be this whole uh, year. The theme is increase. So theme for 2018 is increase. And so we're going to increase your credit scores, but we're also going to increase knowledge on your money and how money works. And so the more money you have in your pocket, the better you're able to navigate and um, get things done. So that's why we're doing this tax portion. All right. So then you want to take at least, at least bare minimum, take 10% of whatever your tax return is. If you get 2,500 bucks, you're going to take 10% of that and put it away. You want to put it away somewhere. I don't care if you don't trust the bank and you want to put it in your mattress or you want to put it in a savings account, but you want to take some of that money and put it away. So again, 10% of 2,500 bucks is $250. You want to take some of that money and put it away. It can be um, the start of your emergency fund because we all should have one. Um, if you listen to people like, say, Susie Orman, she'll say you need like nine months to a year worth of all of your bills saved up. Maybe that's realistic for some. Maybe it's not. It's not realistic for me in that context to be nine months worth of money sitting in the, in the bank. I don't know if I can do that. But start you an emergency fund. Um, it is it is uh, there are surveys out there that says that um, the American public, the majority of us don't have a thousand dollars. We don't have a thousand dollars saved anywhere. Some people don't have five hundred bucks saved anywhere. But this is the time of year when you get that bonus, when you get that windfall, whatever you want to call it. And Uncle Sam give you gives you that money back that they were supposed to give you all during the year. Take some of that money, 10 percent at least, and save it, put it away somewhere. And maybe you do build on because if you already have an emergency fund build on or start your emergency fund you definitely want to do that now what does that have to do let's do something about you know with credit and what this tax return has to do with your credit so when i say uh that your tax returns and your credit are related the only reason i say that they're related is because this is an opportunity also for you to pay down some of your debt so if you have some debt and I'm talking credit card debt because that's directly um, impacted by your uh, by your, um, your your credit score is directly impacted by your debt utilization. And we'll get into that in the questions part that I'm going to answer later on today. It's absolutely um, connected. So if you got some credit card debt and you got some of this money that came in, then you want to use some of that to pay down some of your credit card debt. 
And I want you to do that strategically. If you've listened to me at all, you know that you need to get that credit card debt down to 30% of whatever your limit is. And a way that I want you to even look at it, if you go out and get a new credit card, when you get that new credit card and you go to whoever XYZ bank and then they approve you, you're shocked that you got approved and you or you're shocked that you got approved for so much. If they approve you for a thousand dollars, your mindset, you've got to change your mindset to help you increase your credit score as well. Your mindset should be that I can only use 30 percent of this. So 30% of that $1,000 limit is 300 bucks. That's what you want to go to. That's where you want to stay under if you go ahead and you get a credit card. Now, you extrapolate that. If it's a $10,000 credit card, then you got 3000 bucks to spend on that credit card. But I don't want you thinking, up oh, they gave me 1000 bucks. I'm going to spend $990 of it and say that little $10 for the interest or whatever. I don't want you thinking like that. So since you have this cash in hand, cash in hand make the plan before the cash comes because you know how it how it goes when you've got money in your pocket it always seems to go fast something else always comes up that you didn't anticipate at all which again is another reason for that rainy day fund or that emergency fund that we were just talking about so i want you to do that take some of this money and go ahead and put it towards your credit card debt now you can also do the same thing in regard to um your your collections if you happen to have any as well you can take some of this money and you can try to pay off some of your collections as well so if you've listened to the show or you missed the show that was all about collections and how to handle those people and all of those things if you missed that show i'm gonna suggest you go back and listen to um that show i think it was called collections how to handle them or something of that nature listen to that show because what i don't want you to do is to take that money and just throw it at the wall and see what sticks when it comes to your collections you need a strategy to paying off your collections as well because here's a here's a pearl that i want to drop on you just because you pay off a collection let's say you have a collection from you know your cable company and then you go ahead and you pay it off just because you pay off that collection you think you're done you're good it's going to fall off my credit report hey everybody's happy that's not the case so the collection in itself let's say it's two years old so it's a two-year-old collection you know it's going to stay on your credit report for seven years at least you know that right it's going to stay on your credit report for seven years and you say well i'm going to go ahead and pay it and then i'll be done with it it's off my credit report just because you pay it does not mean that it comes off your credit report the uh the company or the collection agency has to agree to and they have to go in their system and do something to get it to come off of your credit report so you want to make sure that you go back and listen to that show because i'm going to tell you exactly how to do it and also how to reduce the amount that you owe as well so you may be able to do that so maybe you take some of that money and you work on those collections as well and i've recently started telling people if you have medical collections that's the first thing or the best thing for you to go ahead and start getting rid of because with medical collections unlike any other regular collection with a medical collection whether it comes off of your credit report or not it's no longer going to be factored in your score once it's paid down to zero so it doesn't matter if it comes off or not but as long as it's paid down to zero it's no longer going to negatively affect you and so that's something that you absolutely want to do. You want to make sure that you start working on those things. So that's what I want you to do with your taxes. Now, the last thing, and you may not even be expecting this, the last thing for you to do with your taxes, and not necessarily the last thing in order of things to do, but you do want to do a little something for yourself. I'm telling you, and I'm saying basically invest in yourself. Invest in yourself a little bit. And that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, go out, and I like to call it mad money. So you got a little mad money because if you're budgeting and all of these things and all of your money is going to bills and whatnot, it's almost like dieting. A reason a lot of diets don't work is because people go from, you know, having hamburgers to having no meat at all. And so then since they do that, that's an issue. That's a huge issue for um, for you because you're denying yourself and then you wind up binging and getting away from uh, the all the hard work that you put in. So I don't want you to do that with your money either. You need to have a little mad money, a little something that you want to do. I don't want you to necessarily cut out every Starbucks every day or whatever it is that you like or getting your nails done, whatever it is. So you're going to have to do have a little bit of that. 
But in addition, or maybe a little different than that, when I'm talking about investing yourself, maybe you go ahead and you make um you you make you make yourself start a, a business course. Maybe you do a business course. If you have interest in you no know, writing a book or any any interest 